Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and answer your questions this week. I've got two questions that I'm gonna answer it has to do with solar. Here's the first one. Now this is from one, the number one, Gesteban. Gesteban. Here we go. Great, great, great video, all caps. Well, you know I'm gonna answer these questions, right? Great, great, great video, all caps. Now here's to my question. When upgrading your RV travel trailer, mine or yours, I think it's saying his, when upgrading an RV travel trailer, by adding an inverter, specifically one that includes a charger and automatic transfer switch, much like say the Vitron Quattro, because it truly does have an automatic transfer switch, okay? Vitron MultiPlus, not an automatic transfer switch, but I think it's probably the one you're talking about. Well, there'll still be a need for a converter that came with the travel trailer. I was told no by someone at Vitron, but it doesn't sound correct to me. Well, here's the thing. It all depends on what type of inverter charger you have. You see, most inverters now, especially what I'm going to call a whole house inverter, okay, one that can run anything in the RV from Vitron, okay? If you choose the MultiPlus or one of their Quattros, it's an inverter and a charger all in one unit. If you go with a GoPower IC either 2000 or 3000, it's an inverter and a charger. If you go with the uh, Renogy uh, inverter series, you're checking to see is it an inverter and a charger. If it also includes charging, guess what? You don't need the converter anymore, okay? If it's a simple inverter, just a small inverter, you can also look at the inputs. Is the input just DC, in other words, just battery? Output's gonna be AC, because that's what an inverter does. It takes low volts DC and creates high volts AC. But on the input side, but if it also has an AC input, you're gonna read the data plate to find out does it say pass-through or does it say charger? And if it says charger, then no, you don't need the converter anymore, okay? Does that mean you should take it out? Well, that's up to you as the installer. I prefer uh -huh. leaving the 12 volt system alone in the system and then put in the inverted system, right? Put the, leave the 12 volts the way it is in the, um, in the RV and then add the larger inverter to run everything 120 volts. It becomes a backup system, but I get it, space and weight are an issue. But at Vitron, they told you correctly, okay? Because mostly all the units that they have is an inverter and a charger. So there's your answer there. So you gotta look at specifically, we just use the term inverter, right? You gotta look at the specific model you're going for. Is it an inverter and a charger? Or is it an inverter and a pass-through? What's the difference between a pass-through and a charger? Well, one, there's programming in the inverter charger to charge your batteries and to stop charging your batteries at a certain profile. If it's a pass-through, the only thing it's going to do is let the 120 volts pass through. It's not there to charge your batteries. So I hope that helps out. Here's another question that we have here, and this one's from Mark Dove, 5930. I'm trying to figure out, was he born in 30 or was he born in 59? Either way, he's way older than this number actually appears. I have a question. I have a 300 watt solar panel and 12 volt 50 amp hour battery. And for some reason, it doesn't want to charge more than at 100 watts. Is that normal? Okay, so you have a 300 watt solar panel, a 50 amp hour battery. What you didn't tell me is what size solar controller do you have? Okay, the solar controller is gonna take the high volts DC from the solar panel, step it down to battery voltage, in this case 12 volts, and increase the amperage, right, to whatever level there is. Now, in order to do that, they come in different sizes. So I understand you have a single 300 watt panel, you're only getting 100 watts to the battery. Couple things, what size is your solar controller? If it's just set up, say, for 15 amps or something like that, 15 amps um, at your voltage, well, that's gonna produce a certain amount of watts, right? So I got 15 amps at 12 volts, if the battery's 12 volts, then I'll get a little more than 100, right? 150 or something like that. You gotta look at efficiency. Do you have great sun strike on that 300 watt panel? And then lastly, is your battery full? 
here's the thing about electricity. It doesn't move if it doesn't have to. Electricity only moves when there's a demand. And if you're only getting 100 watts, the question is, is are you demanding more than 100 watts? Is the battery dead? Well, then you should get closer to 200 to two something, depending on Sunstrike and depending on the size of your solar controller. But if the battery is completely full, yeah, you're lucky to get 100 watts going through there. I wouldn't say completely full because you wouldn't have much wattage at all. So there's a couple factors I need you to look at. What size solar controller? You got to look at the amp throughput. You multiply that times the battery voltage, in this case 12 volts, and that will tell you the maximum amount of wattage that you can pass through it. Okay? If your solar controller is big enough, then the question is, is your demand bigger than 100 watts? Is your battery dead or is your battery full? If your battery is full or close to full, you may be in what we call float mode and there's just a little bit of wattage going through there. Now at 100 watts, you're probably, it's close whether you're in float or if you're in absorbed mode. So I need a couple more factors to give that to you, okay? But chances are you don't have a big enough solar controller, right, to pass through the 100 watts or the battery's completely full. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just wanna learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. I'm preening to our channel, whichever channel that it's on right now. So I'm so conflated right now. So it's going to be for um, Tech Tip Tuesday. Guest of on. Guest of on. The only thing you could have done better is videos. Videos. I've done like 300 of these things now. So videos, which make it sound like is out of 300, only one of them was great, great, great. I'll not read it that way because I'm thinking you should have said great videos. You were probably intending that, but you did give me 16 different exclamation marks. No, thank you for answers or anything else. Just, I have a question. See you next week.